In this lecture burst, I will be sharing information that is the love child of numerous resources, but the definition itself of blended learning is from the Horn and Staker text, Blended, Using Disruptive Innovation to Improve Schools. You may have heard about disruptive innovation with regard to education, but also economics, business, politics, and culture. So this may be a little bit of a review for you. When we talk about disruptive innovation, we are referring to something that causes a shift in our goals, values, and customs. So generally the way we do things. A pandemic is not an innovation, but it is true that since March, we were quote unquote forced to rethink the way we approach school. But let's consider how this pandemic, as tragic and difficult as it is, provides us with an opportunity to catch up to the way the world simply is and has changed over time. The way we do traditional school is based on a factory system. 100 years ago, um, which was meant to standardize the way we teach and test. At the beginning of the 20th century, there were only 50% of individuals between the ages of five and 19 who were actually enrolled in school. And the goal uh, of education was to support an industrialized job market. The system needed to provide a universal approach in order to efficiently educate a large number of students. So it grouped them by age, um, which we're still doing. Um, it placed them with one teacher where students learned basically the same subject in the same way at the same pace. At that time, this system worked pretty well considering the goals of the time and enrollment increased by 50% in only 30 years. So if students didn't really learn much academically, they weren't really crippled and they either dropped out of school or entered an industrial workforce. Today, however, 60% of our jobs or the jobs that our students will take up uh, require actual knowledge and skill. And so our goals for education have changed. Another thing to think about is personalization. Um, when we think about choices, I like to talk about Starbucks and a number of resources compare the way that we think about personalized learning with the fact that students are um, living in a world that is set up to provide options. So when we design our learning experiences as a one size fits all approach, we're taking students essentially out of the world they know and expecting them to engage. And we wonder why some students aren't meeting our expectations and we blame their effort. Students now will never know what it's like to be invited out for coffee and then go to a Denny's where you sit at a booth and someone comes over and pours a cup of coffee for you. When I was in college, that was how you got coffee. And that was a long time ago, but that's demonstrating my point. Students now, today, have no understanding of that because when you talk about going out for coffee, they think about their favorite personalized concoction. Um, so it, it, it meets their needs and their interests at, the, at that time. We also talk about um, Netflix as an example of this because Netflix and other streaming services. Um, because we think, I think about when I was a child and, you know, there's a reason why people in my generation are so obsessed with things like Golden Girls, uh, because there were times when that was what was on TV. And so you watched, it, and it was a good show, but you watch what was on. Now, students, um, well, everyone really considers what it is that, what they're actually needing and wanting. And viewing shows has become a personalized experience. So the, the idea is that we live in an option um, enriched, robust world. Um, thirdly, so we've talked about competency-based learning in the past and it's kind of thrown us off our, our, our horse, but since we've moved to a remote learning system, we've been thinking about gaps in learning. How are we moving students forward when they're missing important skills and knowledge? It's led us to think about the way we organize our instruction in a way that doesn't slow down learners who have to wait for their peers to achieve the learning, but it also doesn't expect students to move on even if they don't get it.
we want to make sure that we can reinforce the understanding that blended learning is different from strictly online learning, as well as a traditional approach. So um, we're going to look at three components of blended learning that are outlined by Horn and Staker. The first component of blended learning, according to Horn and Staker, is the online piece. Because some of the instruction and learning is online, students automatically have some control over pace, place, and or time. I like to emphasize that this does not mean that students have unlimited control over these elements, nor are all happening at the same time. I also like to emphasize that online learning is different from simply providing students with resources they can access online or only giving them their assessments online. For us to call it online learning, the actual delivery of instruction occurs in an online platform using the tools available. Secondly, um, in blended learning, some of the instruction and learning occurs in a brick and mortar location with a facilitator or educator. So with this in mind, um, I would argue that studying at Starbucks would not be blended learning. It's not a supervised brick and mortar location and it wouldn't really count. Three, um, the two modalities that we just discussed are integrated into a course or class. This means that a teacher can use a system that helps to connect the modalities by delivering the instruction, assessing, and helping them to track student learning, something like Khan Academy or Read 180. Or um, more commonly in our district, an educator or teacher can design, track, and connect the two modalities manually in their whatever their subject or course is. So there's a lot of texts about blended learning, but this one is very accessible um, and I really like it. It even comes with a workbook. If you are interested in reading the whole text, I highly recommend it. And I've linked the chapter um, that I mostly used uh, for this lecture burst, but um, I also have the book if anybody wants to borrow it.